welcome along to Road America. It is round two of the Sim Gear GT3 Premier League season eight of Bollers. And what a start to the season it was just a week ago in Portimao. The conditions went against the drivers somewhat. The racing, however, was intense. We had some great scrapping and we've already established the hierarchy for this new season. Season 8 of the Sim Gear Premier League, of course, this time in the GT3 cars. Previously, uh, we have seen these drivers in the GT4s as well. And what a circuit to go to. Uh, really a smorgasbord of some of the best circuits in the world for GT3 cars. We've done Portimao. Oh, where's the no next uh, logical step? Why not Road America? A fabulous circuit, of course, steeped in racing history. Four miles, 14 corners. The likes of the Moraine Sweep, the Carousel, the Kink and Canada Corner. Some of the corner names here that evoke uh, memories of battles past. And I'm sure we're going to add some more chapters to the history of this track during this session. Well, as you can see, they're currently in what I would call extremely foggy conditions here. Uh, the headlights ablaze through the fog as the cars run on their outlap for this 20-minute qualifying session. After the 20-minute qualifying, we will dive straight into the sprint race, 20 minutes in length. We'll then have a little bit of a break in the middle of the broadcast before a 40-minute pit stop race to conclude the day's action. And we already have, of course, championship leaders to discuss after that uh, first run through at Portimao. And it is Philip Koenig who leads the points. 142 points for Koenig. There is the 27 German Sim Racing entry. Just four points clear, though, of his closest competition, Chris Vrasiliov. Um, Koenig, one of a few drivers caught out in Portimao by the uh, chain from wet to dry during the 40-minute race. He was not on slicks at the end where a lot of the front runners were. So maybe left a few points on the table there, but based on his pace uh, in Portimao, we can expect him to be a favourite all season long. Rasiliov second in the points, as we mentioned. Vladislav Shopov also right there, just six back from the points leader. And Vasil Zhekov makes it four drivers within 10 points. Uh, Koenig on 142, Vasiliov on 138, 136 for Vladislav Shopov and Vasil Jekov on 134. So just eight points covering the top four in the championship after your first round. Last year's champ, Georgi Rachev, of course, uh, sixth position in the standings. He's going to look to try and uh, climb the ladder a little bit if he possibly can. First flying laps then are ongoing here at Road America. It was Rachev uh, who looked to be setting the pace in the free practice session that took place just before we were on the air so we'll keep an eye uh, on whether that data holds across the across the qualifying as well as practice over the crest of the hill they go and they cross the line for the first time your initial benchmark is set by Georgi Rachev and the time is a 2 minute 4.202 so that is the benchmark for everybody else to consider. And we'll see whether anyone can get close over the course of 20 minutes. But Rachev it is who lays down the first marker then. Some good lap times coming in from further back down the order, of course. It's going to take one or two flying laps for some of these drivers to fully get them their eye in. And we'll see whether anyone can improve as the second flying laps come through. We've got some exciting new names to welcome in as well. Uh, Joris Ooms, the Belgian racer, is here for the first time. We also have uh, some new international representation uh, from the likes of uh, Thomas Marks Burgess, uh, Asen Dramiliev, and Connor Brown, who I don't think was here last time either. Charles Kellyman, also a new addition to the grid. It is a sizable entry list here in the Sim Gear GT3 Premier League. Bollers as a community going from strength to strength at the moment. Starting to see those first lap times come in from some of the drivers that we are being introduced to 
And those that missed Portem out, Thomas Marks Burgess and Connor Brown have just gone third and fourth fastest respectively. Meanwhile, Philip Koenig is currently the only driver under the two minute fours. He's gone quicker than Rachev, a 203.919 for him. So we see the cars there coming through the Moraine sweep at the moment under the Sargento bridge. And you saw there drivers using a lot of the kerb and beyond the kerb as well uh, on the way into turn five. You're seeing that again there. So that's clearly something that the clued in know that you can get away with that. Of course, drivers wanting to take every single opportunity to take more speed, to carry more speed, to blunt the angle of the corner. It is, I believe, Rachev again. We ride on board here. You can see that these conditions are certainly uh, challenging from a visibility standpoint, I would suggest. There's not a whole lot uh, to see more than a couple of hundred yards ahead of you. Watching out for the light beams from the rear of the car as much as the actual silhouette of the machine in conditions this intense. We'll see how it evolves, of course, across the next couple of hours. We saw at Portimao that the weather changed significantly across the duration of the event. Could we see more of the same here? The ambient temperatures, of course, have a huge effect on uh, the effectiveness of people's setup. There you see the 28 car through shot. That is uh, Thomas Marks Burgess on his first appearance. Good to see. Some variety there in the top 10. The Porsches are still looking very strong, but uh, Barbanov now up to second place and Georgi Rachev in third place, both representing Lamborghini. Connor Brown all the way up in fifth place as well uh, in the Impulse Racing Ferrari. So that's uh, an interesting sign. I think that's about as high as a Ferrari has been so far this season. is one of the big BMWs. Which car is that? That, I uh, think, uh, could well be Alexander Nikolov. Yes, it is Nikolov uh, in the 18 car. He is the first of the AM runners currently out there on the circuit, just being uh, courteous there to Koenig, giving him some space, but uh, certainly Nikolov wants to build upon his successes at the first event. Your AM standings, of course, uh, Radi Odinichirov with the points lead in AM at the moment on 103 points. The distinctive red Porsche seems to be about the only car that didn't have one completely terrible race and one brilliant race. Uh, just stayed consistent across the two. And that netted him the points lead. So I'm 16 points clear of Milan Milchev, second in the points, and Vladimir Mavrodiev, third in the point standings. Vodinichirov is looking for him on the screen. 33rd and last of those that have set a flying lap so far. So we've not seen a representative time from him yet. There are a few drivers still uh, in the pit lane, still um, waiting at the moment to go out there and venture. So we'll see whether anybody maybe solely focuses on the latter 10 minutes of the session. Perhaps it does look like the conditions are clearing up, of course, as this session goes on. So perhaps they are just waiting uh, to see the conditions evolve, to see the ambient and track temperatures go up before going out there. That could be quite a astute strategy, as a matter of fact. There is Yoris Ums for Automech uh, Psycho Radios. 
course, not the uh, the only Belgian on this grid. We have uh, once again welcomed Roy Vervec to the to the grid again. Of course, also racing for the Automech Psycho Radio's outfit. Great to see a few teams adding drivers, and of course, the teams championship also a factor here. Prize money on the line as well uh, in the. Sim Gear GT3 Premier League, so it's all taken very, very seriously. A negative delta by Madness. 388 points come into this weekend as uh, as the points leaders by 37 points. It's a Jekov Armada following them. The JRS Vertical Grip team, Jekov Rally School, and the Jekov Rally team, uh, second through fourth in the point standings. Uh, certainly. Vasil Zhekov and the rest of the uh, JRS crew here in their legions, here in their numbers. But currently, the magic number is 203.919. That is the lap time that uh, Koenig has laid down for the rest of the field, and it's the lap time that no one else has managed to get close to just yet. on board or you are that we are following uh Jekov at the moment so it's Jekov running currently on screen heading towards the carousel section of the circuit at the moment one of the most tire critical portions of the track and uh, has been a moment for our provisional pole sitter Koenig has had a big incident clearly oh and then he loses it again Koenig with a very, very wounded car. He set that fast time at 203.919 early on. He must have been trying to uh, get back up there. Or was he involved with another driver? One of the Ferraris was just uh, driver's right as well. Ah, yes, okay. So, Philip Koenig was tagged there. I think he was lifting out of the throttle, trying to get out of the way, and they both ended up going the same direction. You can see how that car is crabbing. Koenig having to fight the wheel just to get the car back. A twist then in at the tail of this qualifying session. And will that move things in favour of the likes of Varbanov? Varbanov Heading up the hill at the moment. What kind of lap time is he putting in? No green sectors during this lap and uh, only in the 209 bracket. So I think uh, a disrupted lap there, of course, even at a four mile circuit like Road America, the sheer size of this grid uh, does have its role to play. Currently 36 cars have set a lap and there are 42 cars registered in the server which means that it is very very busy out there it's less like living in the countryside and more like living in an apartment block your neighbors are everywhere look at that there from Raichev very uh, committed there taking all the uh, Exit into turn five, but uh, he saw another car running off wide. He also saw a purple sector come in there from Vladislav Shopov, and it wasn't just a purple sector, it was a purple lap time. Vladislav Shopov has gone fastest, a 203.757. He registered a very quick final sector. And that was enough to give him the fastest lap of all. And of course, Koenig can no longer register a response he's had damage i think he is in the pits at the moment so koenig at this point could be under threat for further positions he's still on the front row at the moment in second place this looks very rapid here from shopov he looks like he has a lot of confidence in the car car looking very well balanced spectacular as it is to watch someone seesawing at the steering wheel 
It's usually not the quickest way, and that car looks butter smooth in the hands of Vladislav Shopov. A little bit wide, though, coming out of the carousel. And you're going to see a lot of that at the carousel, I think, as the race goes on, especially the 40-minute encounter later on towards the end of the tyre life. Of course, that is such a uh, left-hand dominant area for tyre wear. Long, long right-hander putting all of the forces through the left side of the car. Georgi Rachev has just gone second fastest to 203. 0.779, uh, just a couple of hundredths a second away from Shopov then. And critically also ahead of championship leader Koenig on the grid as well. I think Koenig might be... Oh, he's not back out there, is he? No, I was just... Uh, he could be, I'm not quite sure, but... Uh, Regardless, Radchev in the JRS vertical grip Lamborghini, currently second. And who knows, there might be a little bit more pace hidden in that Lamborghini before the end of the session. The Lambo certainly looking fairly strong here. Oh, what a big moment, a huge moment. One car completely sideways on the circuit. A couple of others collecting him. I think Radchev managed to do a brilliant job there of uh, avoiding all of that, but... That was a big drama in front of him. Well, this lap is certainly confined to history at this point, but very good evasive job from Georgi Rachev. Last thing you want to see coming out of a corner at something like 70, 80 mile an hour is a car facing sideways and other cars hitting that initial spinner. Right, just two minutes and five seconds left of this session then. The time is at a premium. Will we see any late improvements? It's Vladislav Shopov who currently holds the provisional pole position on a 203.756. Georgi Rachev second, Philip Koenig third fastest. Those are the only three drivers within the two minute three bracket on a two minute 4.022 is Varbanov ahead of Connor Brown. Thomas Marks Burgess in sixth place means there are two impulse racing cars in the top half dozen. We ride on board with Georgi Rachev as he approaches turn five. Again, very wide there, too wide there. He's calling that lap an abandon. Barbanov doing the same thing. Who's this emerging through the fog? It is Thomas Marks Burgess. So Burgess, currently sixth fastest. 45 seconds left on the clock. Has he got... An improvement waiting in the wings. His last lap time was his best so far, a 2 minute 4.367. Let's see what this time ends up looking like. Burgess with a green delta through the most recent sector. Can he move up from sixth on the grid? He'll cross the line now. And I don't think, no, it's not going to be any better. That was a 205. I think lost some time in the early stages of the lap. It doesn't look to me as though anyone is likely to best Vladislav Shopov then. There's the number 13 car bouncing across the curbs as the qualifying session draws to a close and Vladislav Shopov then will start our first race from pole position. Georgi Rachev second. Philip Koenig in third place, Viktor Varbanov in fourth position, Connor Brown and Thomas Burgess together on row three. Then it's Daniel Markov and Boyko Shopov. Um, Julian Janowski ninth, Georgi Atanasov in tenth place in 11th position. Rostislav Kochev, Joris Ums in 12th place. Jordanin Svetanov in 13th position, Julian Dimitrov in 14th. 
Uh, Venceslav Rachinov in 15th position ahead of Vasil Yekov, uh, Jekov, sorry, he's going to have some work to do from 16th. Pavel Ivanov in 17th place. Anton Stratiev in 18th position. The first of your AM drivers down in 19th place It is Alexander Nikolov for Negative Delta Academy. Ozidar Andreev in 20th place ahead of Mihail Velikov. Milan Milchev making it two BMWs at the front of AM in 22nd overall. Roban Skelton in 23rd. Ivo Serafimov in 24th. Alexander Nikolov in 25th position. Then it is uh, Radlev Ivanov in 26th. Roy Vavak in 27th. Alexander Sakov in 28th position. Martin M.J. Sampson in 29th. Krastin Stanchev rounding out the top 30. Ivelo Dimitrov in 31st place. Plamen Dimitrov in 32nd. Dimitar Palazov in 33rd. Vladimir Mavrogiev in 34th position. Lazar Katsarski in 35th ahead of Charles Kellyman, who will be 36th on the grid. Radi Voidenicharov has some work to do. He is the AM class championship leader, but he starts from 37th. Asen Dramaliev in 38th. Vladislav Stefanov in 39th, rounding out the top 40. Konstantin Kirchev, Yankov and Parvanov will round out our 42 car starting grid for this race. So then the formation lap begins. Take a listen to the variety of six cylinder, 10 cylinder, eight cylinder motors as the cars verbal away into the formation lap for the first 20 minute race here at Road America. Lots of fabulous engine sounds from these cars then as they roll on this formation lap four miles to coast around. So they've got quite a long lap here. Tire temperatures will more than likely cool with everybody in two by two formation, meaning they can't do too much to generate heat in the tires. So with 42 cars going into the first corner, potentially with quite cold tyres. That means it could be a very interesting first few corners of this race. And keep an eye on that, of course. As they head down to turn one, it is a fairly basic on paper 90-degree right-hander, but uh, anyone who's seen a race here before, be it in NASCAR, IndyCar, Champ Car, Trans Am, IMSA, American Le Mans series, pick your poison. We'll know that uh, that is an accident hotspot. And of course, with that long run from turn 14 up the hill over the crest and then down to turn one, uh, it is inevitable that there are moments to be had at that first turn. So who will come out on top in this race? It's a very compelling First couple of rows of the grid, of course, Vladislav Shopov up there on pole position, third in the championship at the moment, and he's well clear uh, of his title contenders, um, at least the closest of them. Philip Koenig, of course, the championship leader there on the second row. Uh, but of the championship contenders, the one that uh, is missing is Chris Vrasiliov. Vrasiliov. I don't think even present, if I'm not mistaken. I don't see him there at the sharp end. I don't see him on the timing at all. So I think Vasiliev might not be here in general. And that is going to be damaging to his championship efforts, if that is the case. I'm just scrolling again through the timing. I'm not seeing Vasiliev there. It's not everyone can commit to the full season. does mean that Philip Koenig has six points to who will effectively be his closest title contender, but said title contender is right there on pole position. Vladislav Shopov will be looking to get some points on the board, but 
right there next to him, Georgi Rachev, 18 points off the championship lead, sixth in the standings. Certainly wasn't a bad performance that pulled him out, but we know what Rachev is capable of, so he will be looking for bigger and better things as this weekend begins. If you're a driver in the midfield on the outside line into turn one, I'm sure uh, you realize that this is going to be in the hands of your other party members as much as anybody else. The outside, not the place to be really in turn one. Let's see if everybody makes it through. The first 20 minute race of the day begins now race one of two at road america in the sim gear gt3 premier league begins through the fog comes our field of 42 cars everyone looking for a way to get through the first corner side by side still between shopov and rachev as they go through turn one it's going to be Vladislav shopov with the high ground with the inside line that will lead it through turn two although georgi rachev still making a case for the outside line as they now power towards turn four the moraine sweep barely a corner of course under the bridge there towards turn five and the former outside line for Rachev maybe the inside going into t5 and look at philip koenig he's right there as well all oh, too deep into the corner i think went uh, Rachev. yes he did he falls back into third position then Rachev just too wide there Vladislav Shopov then it is in the lead from Philip Koenig in second place. Then it's Rachev, then it's Thomas Marks Burgess in fourth position. Viktor Varbanov in fifth and Boyko Shopov. Well, he was in sixth, but he's actually just dropped down. Daniel Markov is up into sixth position. The JRS vertical grip Porsches are fighting there from fifth to uh, seventh place. In fact, it's Varbanov, of course, in a Lamborghini for JRS vertical grip. Uh, Shopov and Markov sixth and seventh in their Porsches. Four JRS vertical grip entries in the top seven. Vasil Yekov has made up three places already in the Audi, so he runs 12th position now. Actually, make that four places he's gained. Now that he's up to P12, there is Yekov, uh, Yekov sorry, uh, in the midfield. He's looking to try and navigate back into the top 10, having taken that first podium that we talked to him about at the end of yes, uh, last week's broadcast. So Philip Koenig, recovering from an instant in qualifying, sits there in second position on the boot lid of Vladislav, uh, Vladislav Shopov. Georgi Rachev looks like he's got some good straight line speed in the Hurricane GT3 that we ride on board with now. Thomas Marks Burgess be behind Georgi Rachev. In fact, uh, this is, sorry, this is fifth place uh, Viktor Varbanov that we ride on board with, with Thomas Marks Burgess just ahead. Here is Julian Janowski. So Janowski uh, running further back in uh, ninth position. Who's that ahead? It's Connor Brown in the first of the Ferraris. Brown going ultra defensive there into turn five great to see that 296 in such a creative livery that color scheme really does work on the 296 of connor brown there is your number one car anton stratiev stratiev down in 17th position we saw some good efforts out of anton in the first weekend of course he sits ninth in the standings on 117 points. Just ahead of him, the first, one of the first of the Mercedes AMGs. Again, the Mercedes curiously absent from the sharp end of the order and just getting overtaken, in fact, there. I think uh, Mihal Velikov there losing out to uh, Anton Stratiev. Venceslav Rachinov in 15th position, just pursuing as the front engine cars getting in amongst it with Anton Stratiev, the two big beasts, the Mercedes AMG GT3, naturally aspirated 6.2 litre motor in that one, and then of course the 
BMW utilizing a three liter turbo, two very different cars, but they're two of the biggest, most imposing shapes on the GT3 grid. Of course, that BMW is your AM class leader, Milen Milchev in 18th overall. Just behind him is uh, Bozidar Andri, who we saw running right at the front a week ago in Portimao. It's fascinating how the hierarchy of things changes from weekend to weekend. There will be your drivers that are at the top every single time. There are others who might struggle at a certain circuit and drop down the order. Here's your battle for fourth position then. Thomas Marks Burgess still being pursued by Viktor Varbanov at the moment. Burgess, who started in sixth place, he's made up two positions, as has Boyko Shopov up in sixth place. Connor Brown sits in P8 as well. Back to Bozidar Andreev, who has moved up past the AM class leader. Of course, Andrei, uh, Milchev has to be careful not to fall too far down. Uh, some of the other AM protagonists are just a few cars away. He's fighting with the lower end pro class drivers at the moment but the second bmw in that shot uh, the car of stanchev is the car that sits second in am so milan milchev uh, only a couple of seconds clear of the am battle but look at this midfield so close side by side almost all the time really is a dog eat dog world in the mid pack of this race in a very tidy opening stanza of this race. We have had the odd incident further back, but in general, everybody being very respectful, very careful out there on the circuit. And that's exactly, of course, what we want to see. There is Varbanov. Once again, closing in on Burgess at the end of the straight, that Lamborghini, a slipperier shape, lower drag coefficient. Quicker towards the end of the straight, certainly, but not quick enough to get past Thomas Marks Burgess just yet. Julian Janowski currently sits 22nd in the standings. He had a poor weekend, I think, at Portimao overall. We saw flashes of his true pace, but we did not see his uh, ideal results. Sits well within the top 10. I'm sure we'll be keen to get points on the board. Barbanov then has gotten past Burgess, but only briefly. He got through off camera. And then we see a mistake just a matter of moments later. Barbanov through, and then immediately he loses positions. He got the inside line into turn five. That was nicely done, fairly well executed. But then just a corner later, he put a foot wrong. And he now finds himself down in sixth place with Markov just behind him under the rear wing of the Lamborghini, ready to strike if half an opportunity strikes. Vladislav Shopov then leads the race by six tenths of a second over Philip Koenig. Koenig currently no answer to Vladislav Shopov. Has been there within a second the entire way, though. Janowski here within the top ten in ninth position. Following the progress there of Connor Brown ahead. Of course, Connor Brown has the toe of uh, Daniel Markov ahead of him, which might help a bit on the straights. Of course, the dirty air doesn't help in the corners. And I think that's what caught out Julian Janowski there through the final few corners. And that could open up the gates to Rostislav Kotchev. Kotchev closing, closing and closing some more. Both Jekov affiliated drivers, but one for the rally school and one for the rally team. And Kochev not quite close enough for a move into turn one. I thought for sure that momentum was going to carry him at least side by side, but not to be on this occasion. We get a look back at uh, Ivelo Dimitrov, who... Certainly ended up carrying some damage at Portimao. And a sideways moment coming through Canada corner. Oh, hopefully avoided the barrier at the end of that clip. Um, 
but uh, continues on his way uh, down outside the top 30. Anton Stratiev in 16th position then. Who's that just ahead of him? It is uh, our newcomer, Joris Ooms. The 22. We ride from the bumper, the rear bumper of the 22 Porsche. And you can see there, uh, closing in Stratiev under braking, the ebb and flow as they brake and accelerate out of the corners. We get a replay here of Milen Milchev. He was the AM class leader. Is he still the AM class leader? I'm not quite sure what we're going to end up seeing here. He managed to get past the 35 car. But thankfully, that was uh, the extent of it. I was a bit worried that that was going to reveal itself as a rather more sinister incident. Oh, a big moment for Serafimov. Oh, he gets collected. That was the fear. He went back across the circuit. Took out one of the BMWs. And for Serafimov, that was a major, major impact. And unsurprisingly, with a tyre gone from the car, his race comes to an end. Collected. That was a major, major moment. As we get a look back at the tail end of that, we'd already seen several cars pile on. By that time, Vladislav Shopov then will be unaware of all of that, I imagine, at the front of the order. But uh, a lot of cars collected in that. Uh, one of the BMWs was involved. That was uh, Vladimir Mavrodiev. We also saw another of the Jekov rally cars getting into it there. Roban Skelton uh, reversing. <laughs> With Ivelo Dimitrov, that's quite an absurd sight. And, oh, yep, they found each other. Oh, dear. Well, a little bit of drama never hurt anybody, but a bit too much might get unbearable. Uh, Vladimir Mavrodiev, I think, was the BMW caught up in that incident coming out of the kink. We've lost uh, Plamen Dimitrov as well. We obviously lost uh, Ivo Serafimov. We saw that in real time. So a few drivers eliminated, 36 left standing at this stage of the race. Connor Brown still there in eighth position in the first of the Ferraris, the only Ferrari within the top 20, although Alexander Nikolov is in 21st place, so he might soon join at the upper half of the table. Here's your lead battle then, and Philip Koenig looks like he's got the bit between his teeth very quick through the last couple of sectors. And as Shopov's pace starts to drop away, Koenig seems to be just as quick as he has been all race. Maybe he's been preserving his tyres a little more. Georgi Rachev is also there and in the slipstream in the Lamborghini, which is always quick towards the end of these long straights. So he could be a factor as they run towards turn five as well. There is your leading trio. Aren't we in for a treat? We've got less than seven minutes, or just over seven minutes of this race left to go. Shopov has been leading the entire way, but Koenig has now rolled his sleeves up, and Georgi Rachev is right there with them. Towards turn five we go, then. And will Koenig have a go? He's not close enough. He will wait for an opportunity that doesn't yield uh, too negative of a risk-reward ratio. Of course, he's now got to be cognizant of Georgi Rachev behind him as well. Of course, if you're uh, Thomas Marks Burgess, you're watching all of this from up uh, from behind going, go on, get into each other. Viktor Varbanov fell down and then back up the timing screen there. I think that might have been... Um, just a, a timing hiccup there momentarily. Varbanov still there in sixth place, but the top three separated by three quarters of a second. Again, Rachev on the bumper of Philip Koenig looking pretty feisty. Again, towards the end of these long full throttle sections of the circuit, the Lambo seems to be in its element. 
Daniel Markov just dropped a few places. He's fallen out of the top 10. And we're getting a replay of why Markov at the kink. Too much curb. And that sent him off stage right. So easy to get the kink wrong. It looks quite simple, but it's a section of circuit that you need to nail. You need to get the corner entry just right. Now, Posidar Paravanov, or Parvanov, sorry, was uh, doing a good job of staying out of everybody's way. And he took that to the extremes. He actually stopped on the inside of Canada corner there. Rachev. Gets a good run there out of turn three. He will be on the offensive. There is uh, Bozidar Andreev in 17th place, still trying to recover his race from a tricky position. Over just behind him is uh, Ivanov, Pavel Ivanov in 18th position, Daniel Markov in 16th place. Three very quick drivers there. Outside the top 15, really illustrating just how much quality and depth there is on the Simgear GT3 Premier League grid. There goes Andreev. Oh, goodness me, but an obstacle in the form of the number nine car. And that's why you don't slow down that much, because sometimes you're out of the way. Other times you find yourself in the way. And I think that's what happened there to Bozidar Andreev. There's Vasil Yekov on the verge of the top 10 again having made up five positions over the course of this race. Anton Stratiev has made up six places. The same applies to uh, Mikhail Velikov in the first of the Mercedes as well, running 15th position. We've had a few drivers up the order. The most impressive gains are actually from 25th place man, Konstantin Kirchev, who started 40th and now runs 25th. He's just been inheriting spots and staying out of trouble. Vasily Jekov, though. For the Jekov Rally School. And showed me some uh, clips of the Rally School over the last uh, couple of days. BMW's fishtailing wildly through the dirt. Looks like a lot of fun. Vladislav Shopov. She's driving this car through the rear view mirrors. This time by, they have started the penultimate lap of the race. Clock will strike 10, 20 minutes on the next lap so two to go here at road america there's varbanov following boyko shopov who's had a very strong race shopov gaining three spots up in fifth position i understand that uh, vladislav and boyko shopov are not related of course they do race for uh, opposing teams so it would be interesting if they were something like brothers and and they didn't race together then again, Ralph and Michael Schumacher got away with it back in the day, didn't they? Pavel Ivanov in the slipstream then of Markov. Markov fighting off this battle for 16th place. Ivanov has, of course, gotten past the Manti liveried car of Andreev after the earlier dramas. Ivanov trying to find a way around the outside there. He couldn't get it done. Andreev senses an opportunity to maybe try and fight back. Of course, he was going for 16th position when it all went wrong. I thought the Ferraris as well. We go from Porsche Carrera Cup to Ferrari Challenge as the 296s have found each other out there on the circuit. Dramaliv in the Castrol Cup. Uh, just following, I think, one of the back marking machines. In fact, no, this is Charles Kellyman. Uh, with Asen Dramaliv just behind him and Lazar Katsarski. Uh, that's 28th, 9th and 30th positions. Ivanov has still not found a way past in this battle for 16th place. And in fact, Pavel um, Ivanov was looking a little bit more like he was in the clutches of Bozidar Andri, but of course it fluctuates almost corner to corner with the effect of the toe who gets the right run through the corner but here still very close is the battle for fifth and sixth positions it's still very close at the front of the order as well uh, Koenig right on the back of Shopov Viktor Varbanov wanting to get into the top five Boyko Shopov though has held station 
so far across this race distance. This is the final lap of the race then. This is the main or one of the main overtaking opportunities on the lap into turn five. Is Philip Koenig going to make the lunge or is he going to think title and wait this one out? It looks like for now he is just biding his time, but who knows? There's still quite a few deep braking zones on this lap. Road America doesn't uh, want for overtaking opportunities. There are certainly enough of them strewn across the layout here at Elkhart Lake. And right on board once again with Shopov as Koenig closes in under braking. Georgie Rachev, of course, willing to play the spoiler if Koenig has a go and it doesn't work. Georgi Rachev will gladly inherit one position. He'll gladly inherit the win if the opportunity takes him. Koenig with the aero wash there, losing a bit of time to shop off through the carousel. They now speed through the kink towards Canada Corner for the final time. It looks as if Vladislav Shopov may have done enough here as they power out of Canada. Just Three more apexes. The 29 car, Vladislav Shopov has put in a very well-managed race from the front of the pack. He comes across the brow of the hill and Vladislav Shopov will be presented the checkered flag. Philip Koenig right there with him, but has to settle for second place. Georgi Rachev taking third position. Fourth place has gone to Burgess. Shopov ahead of Varbanov in that battle for fifth and sixth place. Vasil Jekov having to settle for 11th. Couldn't quite get back into the top 10. Ivanov will cross the line in 17th place. The first of our AM runners home uh, will be Milen Milchev. It does look as though we've lost the, uh, the Mansai livery Porsche, though, from that scrap. Bozidar Andreev has fallen down the order and I think maybe even retired from the race. Yes, he has. So Andre had a drama on the final lap. Krastin Stanchev will cross the line further back in the field, 24th place. But your winner in AM, the other BMW of Milan Melchev in 19th position. The only AM driver within the top 20. Now we're getting a look back. Alexander Nikolov tagging the rear of the 131 BMW of Milen Milchev on the very last lap of the race. Nikolov, who was challenging him for the AM lead at that point, unfortunately had to settle for second in class. Radian Ivanov has uh, come to a halt out there. This is still on replay. He had a drama towards the end. Maybe he underfueled. I don't know. The chequered flag waves on a very dramatic first race at Road America. I just saw that. Uh, Ivelo Dimitrov there uh, pushing the Audi across the line. That, I suppose, is sportsmanship one way or another. But Vladislav Shopov it was that took the race victory from Philip Koenig in our first 20-minute race. Uh, Georgi Rachev in third position. Thomas Burgess in fourth place. Boyko Shopov in fifth ahead of Viktor Varbanov. Connor Brown, Julian Janowski, Rostislav Kochev, and Georgi Atanasov At Atanasov, sorry, in tenth place. Vasil Jekov in eleventh. Anton Stratiev in twelfth place. Jordan uh, in thirteenth position. Uh, Joris Ums in fourteenth. Velikov fifteenth. Markov in sixteenth. Pavel Ivanov in seventeenth place. And Rachinov in 18th position. Second page, starting with uh, Milo Milchev, the AM class winner. He finished ahead of Martin MJ Sampson, who secures his first top 20 of the season. Alexander Nikolov, Nikolov in 21st. Konstantin Kurchev in 22nd. Zakov in 23rd. Stanchev in 24th. Dramaliev in 25th position, ahead of Kellyman, Katzarski, and Vivek. In 29th place, uh, it was Palazov, 30th place for Skelton. Ivanov in 31st uh, with a push there across the line, I think, from uh, Ivelo Dimitrov. Andreev in 33rd. Stefanov in 34th position. 35th to Dimitrov. Parvanov in 36th. 37th 
to Vodinitrov, the AM Championship leader. I don't think took the flag eventually. That's a big story. He was involved in that big collision. Uh, Serafimov in 38th, Dimitrov, Mavrodiev, Nikolov and Yankov ran out the 42 car order. The drivers then back out there on the circuit for a 10 minute warm up. And of course, that warm up leads into the 40 minute pit stop race. Let's go to an advert break from our sponsors and our partners as we get ready for race two.
Yes, sir. Welcome back then to the grid. The 40 minute feature race is about to get started. Georgi Atanasinov is your pole position starter for this one. Rostislav Kochev on the first row with him as Julian Janowski on row two alongside Connor Brown. Viktor Varbanov in fifth position. He's alongside Boyko Shopov. Thomas Marks Burgess starting from seventh this time. And then, of course, is Georgi Rachev in eighth. Philip Koenig in ninth. And Vladislav Shopov in tenth position. This race, of course, is a reverse grid top ten adding yet more complexity to the 40-minute pit stop race. In 11th place will be Vasil Jekov. He just missed out on that reverse grid pole that he had last time out. Anton Stratiev in 12th position. Yordanin Svetanov in 13th. Joris Ums in 14th position ahead of Mihal Velikov. Daniel Markov in 16th place. Pavel Ivanov in 17th position. In 18th place, Rachinov, 19th place, Milan Milchev, Martin, MJ Sampson, rounding out the top 20 just behind the man who won in AM a few moments ago. Alexander Nikolov in 21st, Konstantin Kurchev in 22nd, Zakov in 23rd, and Krastin Stanchev in 24th place. 25th position is Asen Dramaliev, who uh, managed to get through a few positions during the previous race. Charles Kellyman alongside him. Katzarski in 27th. Uh, Roy Vivek will be hoping for a slightly better run of things in this race. He starts from 28th position. Palauzov in 29th. Skelton in 30th. Ivanov in 31st place. Dimitrov in 32nd. Andreev 33rd place, Stefanov in 34th, Dimitrov and Parvanov round out row 18. Row 19 of the grid, Vodinichirov, uh, the AM leader coming into this weekend. He needs a better run of it in this race. Serafimov in 38th position, Dimitrov 39th. Mavrodiev, Nikolov and Yankov round out the 42 car scheduled grid for this race. So then... All change, of course, on the grid. This time around with the top 10 reverse, Georgi, Aten uh, Georgi Atanasov has a very good opportunity here. In the 63, the breaking point Porsche. He's joined on that front row by Rostislav Kochev. Connor Brown also with a good opportunity uh, from high up the standings too. Julian Janowski, who, of course, set... Uh, we saw embattled in Portimao. He will be starting from the second row of the grid too. That could be a big opportunity. Now, we're getting a replay of the cars leaving the start line. And did we have a collision before they even really got going? The Audi struggling to get underway there. Eventually did so. Seems as if everyone is okay. 40-minute race, of course. We are expecting pit stops here. Not for refueling, but certainly for uh, the tyres. We saw last time out, of course, the weather changing significantly over the course of the race as well. I think that uh, the radar is a little more positive this time it's certainly not going to become a bright sunny springtime day anytime soon but in general the conditions look okay in fact it's looking 99 percent is that saying with the rainfall okay maybe maybe we're going to have another tricky race let's see let's strap in georgie atanasov will be our pole sitter Cloudy conditions, currently what we have. We'll keep an eye to see whether that changes. Track ambient at 24 degrees, 18 degrees Celsius. The air temp. They round the final corner then in two by two formation. And it's Georgi Itanasov and Rostislav Kochev who will be looking to capitalize from the front row of the grid. Tanisov with pole position on the inside line, of course. He will have the high ground into turn one. Can he use that 
to its intended effect. The red lights go out and we're racing. In the Sim Gear GT3 Premier League. They head down towards turn one through the haze. And who is it going to be leading? It looks like we've got a challenger from row two. Yes, Julian Janowski there trying to get to the inside. There are cars skittling everywhere. All manner of contact, instant and accident going on. Many of our front runners have been wiped out in that one. The leaders from the previous race among those collected. Georgi Rachev just about managed to get through. Vasil Yekov did as well. Uh, but Vladislav Shopov among those collected. A lot of cars will be carrying damage. And look at the top eight or nine cars so far away from everybody else because of what's happened there in at the first corner. We saw a few cars going straight across the grass on the inside. It's Georgi At Atanasov then in the lead. Julian Janowski in second place with Connor Brown in the Ferrari right there with him. But Brown uh, under pressure from Rostislav Kochev, Thomas Marks, Burgess and Co at the moment. But Burgess goes into the wall. Burgess runs out of road and he falls out of the top ten. Thomas Marks Burgess then will now have a lot of work to do and he might have a damaged Porsche with which to do it. Drama, drama, and more drama still on the first lap of the race. Philip Koenig among those collected as well. The championship leader down in 38th position at the moment. So he's one of those that was collected in the accident. A lot of our front runners were taken out there. The drivers that were fighting out for the victory in the previous race. Philip Koenig falling through the order. change the championship complexion significantly at the end of this race. Georgi Atanasov, race leader ahead of Janowski, ahead of Brown, Rostislav Kochev in fourth position. And Georgi Rachev has managed to move all the way up to fifth place over the course of this lap. He's been making up some positions and he is now in a very, very strong position as uh, the only driver on last race's podium to still be there in the position that we we're expecting him to be. Gotchev here to the inside of Connor Brown. Brown trying to stick with it on the outside line. Does carry good speed there through turn three. The two Lamborghinis of Rachev and Varbanov are right there behind them as they go side by side uh, through turn four and towards turn five. Now Connor Brown with the inside line. A bit slower in a straight line seemingly than the Porsche. And sure enough, Kochev does get a nose ahead, but Brown holds on around the inside. Rachev trying to follow him through as well. Brown still holding on to that third position. The 47 car then finally secure in that third place for at least a few more corners. Kochev in fourth. Rostislav, uh, the pressure though from Georgi Rachev in fifth place, from Viktor Varbanov in sixth, Boyko Shopov there as well in seventh position. And here's a replay of the 26 Ferrari and one of the Audis just skittling across the grass. Another of the Audis going into the first corner backwards. And there you see effectively positions nine through 19 collected all in unison there. Only a few drivers managed to make it through from that kind of lower front end of the order. You get another replay of it there and many, many, many collisions. And Koenig actually had a moment of his own, didn't he, as well? In addition to everything else going on, Koenig uh, had a spin as well. So a lot was happening all at once there. I'll tell you who the biggest beneficiary was, Bozidar Andreev, who has made up some 20 positions so far in this race. Started 33rd, now runs 13th. He managed to get through that quite handily. You saw there the breakaway at the front of the order, Atanasov and Janowski running 1-2. Connor Brown there in third place has now got a few car lengths over Rostislav Kochev. Vasil Jekov has just been Dispatched there by Vladislav Shopov, who, of course, is on the recovery drive. Shopov didn't fully avoid everything, but he didn't um, get too much collateral in all of that action. 
to the inside then comes Georgi Rachev and he moves up to fourth position. It's looked like Kochev was not probably going to be able to hold off Rachev for too long and sure enough, Georgi is up into fourth place. Rachev from Kochev from Varbanov, Shopov, Stratiev in this pack here. Top two have broken away fairly comprehensively. 1.8 seconds up the road from Connor Brown already, but Brown will be trying to rally. Through the carousel comes the pack. Field fairly spread out, of course, by all of those dramas. Krastin Stanchev in 14th position is your AM class leader. AM winner from race one, Milen Milchev, was involved in that uh, drama. There's uh, Mavrodiev further back as well in 22nd. Mavrodiev uh, also up there. We're getting a look at Milen Milchev having a moment. So Milchev... Um, I'm pretty sure was tagged in that first corner melee. He's still struggling with the car now. There is Avrodiev then in 22nd place, just behind uh, Markov and Kazatsky. Shopov in ninth place then. Following Stratiev at the moment. So it looks like Shopov has really good pace. He doesn't seem to have any damage of any sort he's climbing through the order or climbing towards the battle gainfully at the moment but now he's got to try and find his way past he goes around the outside of Stratiev for p8 tries to get the run of course on the outside coming out of turn three as that will be the inside by the time they get to the next breaking zone that is turn five Stratiev for Jekov rally score impulse racings Vladislav shop off to the inside Gets it done fairly nicely there. I think the position should be his, although Stratiev does a good job finding traction out of the corner on the outside. They go under the bridge and through has gone Vladislav Shopov. He's up two places from his starting position, but he's had to do a lot of work to get back into this battle. How far up the order can he go over the course of the next seven minutes or over the course of the next 33 minutes of this race? Right on board with Stratiev then, as he watches Shopov. It is, of course, Vladislav's namesake, Boyko Shopov, just ahead now. Both Shopovs in Porsches, so they're going to be uh, evenly matched. Stratiev doesn't look like he has an answer. You'll be aware as well of uh, Vasil Jekov. And Mihail Velikov in 10th and 11th place. Velikov, I think, running higher than he has all season in 11th position right now. Very scarcely have we seen uh, Mercedes in the top 10 so far in season eight. Here comes Janowski then, still tucked in behind Georgi Atan Atanasov. Of course, again, Janowski had a lot of potential at Portimao, but he also had a good number of incidents, it must be said. Um, seemed to be a bit of a magnet for the dramas. How he would love to step on the podium here at Road America. Georgi Atanasov, though, will be eager to do so himself. Of course, Atanasov. I think away down the championship standings. Was he even with us last time? I'm not sure that he was, but uh, Georgi Rachev there threw into third place. So he's managed to sneak up behind Brown in the Ferrari and he's moved up into P3. Connor Brown losing out then to the defending Premier League champion, Georgi Rachev. Boyko Shopov there. Defending against Vladislav Shopov and that's put Anton Stratiev into contention there in the back of shot you see there Stratiev just hounding the rear of Shopov again it looked like Vladislav might have found a way past Boyko but instead he uh, had no momentum coming out of that corner and Anton Stratiev 
closing in, and it must be said, Vasil Jekov seems closer and closer to the back of these two Porsches every time we cut back to them. I think that Jekov is uh, leading the cavalry back to the rear of this uh, of this scrap at the moment, although Skratiev losing time, slowing down a lot, actually. Now, what's going on with Skratiev? Because that was quite a lot slower through the kink. Now side by side with Jekov, that was quite strange from Stratiev. I didn't see anything go too amiss there. Maybe I missed something while I was looking at the timing screen, but uh, Ivanov there in 11th place as well. Just behind them, you see uh, the Merk of Velikov and then the recovering Tomax Marks Burgess, who of course found himself in the wall on that one. Burgess has top 10 pace. Velikov had a look to the inside line there but couldn't get it done. Top three in Am, Krastin Stanchev in the BMW. Uh, Vladislav Stefanov in the Mercedes and Radi Vodinicharov in 18th place, having gained 19 positions so far in this race, although he has just lost out to uh, Vladimir of Rodiev. In fact, those two are having a very exciting battle at the moment as we cut to that uh, turn three. Vodinicharov then just about ahead for now, but uh, the big BM suddenly trying to monster the Porsche by the looks of it. They're swapping positions once more. Mavrodiev with a nose ahead. The Ferrari of uh, Lazar Katsarski watching on as well. Boyko Shopov Still trying to make his car as wide as possible to try and stave off Vladislav Shopov, who has closed in once again. Pace advantage clear to see for Shopov as Vodinicharov again still fighting for this third place and Am still fighting to try and come out of this with his Am title lead intact. And that was a little bit of contact between them. That was a bit too close for comfort. Katzarski looking to see if he can find a way through. But no move made. Janowski then following in the wheel tracks of well, Janowski rather uh, being followed by uh, Ratchev now. Ratchev has closed in on the top two. So George Atanasov at the front of now a three car battle at the front of the order. And Connor Brown isn't too far off being closed in either. So uh, we could have a four car fight for the lead before long. It seems as though the pace of Atanasov and Janowski is starting to drop, and certainly Georgi Rachev is looking very, very feisty. Rachev, I think, could be the spoiler in all of this, as uh, Boyko Shopov has been dispatched now by Vladislav. So Shopov up to seventh place on Shopov, Vladislav up to P7. Georgi Rachev with the straight line speed slight edge in this Lamborghini especially towards the end of the straights Janowski losing out there he's got a nose ahead does Rachev that we ride on board with and he converts that into second place fairly clean stuff there uh, made that look easy and Rachev up to P2 then all oh, out wide goes Georgi uh, goes Georgi Atanasov and that hands the lead to Rachev Rachev makes up two places in two corners. Georgi Rachev then is the leader. Julian Janowski sent his opportunity and dives to the inside for second place as well. He wants to try and pursue Georgi Rachev if he possibly can. But Atanasov has gone from third or first to third in a matter of moments there. Just got it wrong coming out of turn six. That allowed Georgi Rachev through. Now he's just having to try and fight to hold on to a podium because here comes Connor Brown as well in at the Ferrari from Impulse Racing. Right on board with Connor as they head into Canada Corner. Love to try and get on the podium in his first appearance of the season. The inside at the final turn, not close enough to get it done there, but gets a good run out of the corner. You could see how he squared up corner exit there versus Atanasov. And towed all the way up the hill, pulls alongside. And does the Porsche have the edge over the Ferrari once the Ferrari is out of the slip? They look about even. 
Is Connor Brown going to be brave enough on the brakes into turn one? Yes, he is. Nicely done by Connor Brown. Victor Varbanov closing in on them as well. So Varbanov is looking for his opportunity for his pound of flesh in this battle. Georgi Rachev then to recap is your race leader now over Julian Janowski. We've then got this exciting scrap for third place currently headed by Connor Brown. Viktor Varbanov drawing alongside Georgi Atanasov, who was the leader a lap ago. He's now down to fifth position. Atanasov then looking to try and get another uh, JRS Lamborghini onto the podium. Two JRS vertical grip machines on the podium at the moment. We have a look here at the Porsche of Alexander Tzakov. And that was a little bit clumsy. Tried to dive to the inside of our championship leader, Vodinicharov, and ended up spinning himself. There is Pavel Ivanov in 11th place. Jekov then is up to 10th. Jekov in the top 10. Barbanov, meanwhile, having gotten past to Tanisov, he now wants to try and do the same to Connor Brown. He's got the inside line for Canada. And that Lamborghini, looking very well sorted and very fast, gets past Connor Brown, and Brown might now lose out to a Tanisov as a result. Belivinov trying to go around the outside of Jekov in the Audi. Through the turn 13, very difficult to go too wide through there. And uh, best seat in the house for Jordanin Svetanov. He's watching on at the back of this pack. He's a, a, a little way off the pack, sorry. It's Mihal Velikov at the back of all of this. Thomas Marks Burgess, of course, for Impulse Racing, uh, just behind Jekov and Ivanov as well. And that Mercedes looks very quick towards the end of those straights as we look back further to uh, Alexander Nikolov, who, of course, went skating across the grass at turn one at the very start of this race. Still bearing the scars from that, but not too far down the order. Fighting now for 22nd and contact there. One of the Porsches goes skating off into the gravel. That was Ventislav Rachinov. Thomas Marks Burgess then. Still under pressure from his fellow Porsche and the Lamborghini. Getting a replay here of Rachinov getting tagged into the gravel. He'll have done well to avoid any barriers. Yeah, he's not avoided any barriers. That was a big, big hit spell the end of his competitive running in this race. Thomas Marks Burgess has got up to 11th position then ahead of Ivanov, ahead of Velikov. Velikov again still a threat I think for a top dozen finish by the end of this. That Merck looks strong uh, towards the end of some of these straights in the toe. The Porsches look a bit quicker through corners like Carousel. Nikolov haranguing the rear of Joris Ums at the moment for 21st position. Of course, Nikolov he's running in the AM class. Yes, he is. And uh, running within the top half dozen in AM as well. Vladislav Shopov, we ride on board with him. Once again, Shopov, who's made up three positions so far, our winner from race one. Rostislav Kochev is the driver ahead of him. Kochev going defensive into turn one. He's already staked his claim to the inside about uh, half a kilometre before they even get to the first corner. Shopov goes around the outside then, carries the speed nicely. Bit of a kick up of the dust there, but... Uh, should still have the outside line through turn three. And of course, given a good run out of this corner, which he gets, manages to move up into P6 in this race. He'll be furious that he lost out on that uh, first corner drama. Otherwise, he could have been up there with Georgi Rachev by now. He may well have been able to carve up through the order together if things have gone differently, but the cards have fallen as they have. And there's still a lot of time to go in this 40-minute race. We are approaching 
half distance in the race and it's Georgi Rachev who leads the way. He made up seven positions already. Julian Janowski uh, behind him in second place. There you see Rachev, there's Janowski, Viktor Varbanov in third place as the leaders making their way through traffic at the moment. Connor Brown in fourth, Georgi Atanasov in fifth place, Vladislav Shopov sixth, Kochev seventh, Boyko Shopov in eighth place, Anton Stratyev in ninth, and Vasil Jekov rounding out your overall top ten at this stage. Your top three in the AM class are Krastin Stanchev for off-track racing, leading in the BMW. The teammate car of Vladimir Mavrodiev is second in AM, and Alexander Nikolov rounding out the AM class podium. As it stands, Mikhail Velikov there in 13th position, still uh, attached to the rear of Ivanov in the negative Delta Porsche. Markov there looking to the inside of our AM leader, Krastin Stanchev. Stanchev managed to hold on to the car there. If uh, Markov hadn't slowed down at that specific moment, we could have had drama. And look at this, the entirety of the top 13 are in the pits. Everyone looks to be taking this opportunity specifically to come into the pit lane at exactly half distance. This is the first time since the race clocked over 20 minutes that um, everyone's had the opportunity to pit and just about everybody has taken that opportunity as you can see everyone arriving onto pit road will anyone at all from the front of the order not pit i don't know it looks like everyone's doing it rachev rejoins the race then still in the lead and we'll have a big battle pack exiting the pit lane, I think, around 5th, 6th place, maybe 7th or 8th as well. Everybody exiting in unison, just as they entered in unison. Still only listed as cloudy on the weather radar. So they bolted on another set of slicks, and well, they'll all be hoping that uh, that remains the case. No twist in the tail, please. Alexander Sakov in the Castro Porsche. Just pursuing another of the Porsches there. And that is uh, Roy Vavek, who I'm quite surprised to see this far down the order. Portimao, maybe a better fit for him than Road America. Velikov down in 12th position then. Right on board with him in the Mercedes. In fact, I think he's gotten past Jekov, hasn't he? Yes, he has. So Jekov lost some time in the pit lane. He's down in 13th position for the time being. He was running in 10th, so he's lost out. Mihal Velikov, meanwhile, then up in 12th place. 11th place right ahead of him, Pavel Ivanov, as was the case prior to the window. And Thomas Marks Burgess has moved back into the top 10. So he is very ably recovering from his issues earlier on. Sakov to the inside of Vivek there. Can't get it done. Really interesting to see that pretty much everybody took that opportunity to take their pit stop. Georgi Rachev exiting the race still as your leader. Here is uh, Dramaliev. Of course, there is no Toyota within GT3, so these Castro liveries have to go somewhere. Gran Turismo kids have to get their representation on iRacing. Since there is no Supra nearby, I suppose a Ferrari or indeed a Porsche is the next best thing for your Castrol colours. Thomas Marks Burgess. Closing in on Anton Stratiev, who has certainly had a, a dramatic race. Started, of course, outside the top ten, so wasn't a beneficiary of the uh, reserve, uh, reverse grid. Has made up three places on where he started, was able to pick his way through everything start of the race and could be on for a very strong top 10 finish here conversely Thomas Marks Burgess um, 
have been in the top 10 all day until that uh, moment on the first lap of this longer race. As you can see, the clouds are opening up here at Road America, so the conditions are improving. The light is starting to beat down on these cars as we go back to Ivo Serafimov in 22nd place. Who's that ahead of him? That's uh, one of the Mercedes that I think is a little bit further down. Serafimov is side by side, however, with uh, Joris Ums. Serafimov started this race well down the order, almost in 40th position at the start of the race, but uh, holds on to 22nd for the time being as Joris Ums pursues. And you see that Alexander Sakov also involved for Ace Racing in 24th place. Now they're all closing in as well on Radi Vodinicharov. Serafimov, Ums and Sakov are all registered as pro drivers though, so that doesn't affect the hand standings. Varbanov, meanwhile, has closed in on Janowski for second place. Varbanov was looking quicker than the Porsches directly ahead of him before the pit window. Of course, we saw already Georgi Rachev use the JRS vertical grip Lamborghini to uh, disappear past them. And it now appears that we're perhaps going to see the same thing from Viktor Varbanov, but... Uh, Here's what I've been talking about all day. That Lamborghini towards the end of the straight just looking so strong. And sure enough, it does look very easy, doesn't it? The number 12 car gets through then. It's a JRS vertical grip. Lamborghini Huracan 1-2. You get a replay of Markov getting tagged there by the 81. That was a little bit clumsy between Markov and Svetanov. They still run 15th and 16th, but uh, we'll have lost some time there. And there you just saw Krastin Stanchev, actually the AM leader, navigating through them uh, as we cut from that replay. So Stanchev has moved up to 14th overall. As Sakov now looking for a way past uh, Vodnicharov, who has dropped a few positions so far. Vodnicharov, oh, they make contact. They meet at the middle at turn three. Sakov, I think quite lazily there, left the nose in. Wasn't really far enough alongside. And has ended up, oh, and rejoins just ahead of another of the Porsches there. That was uh, Daniel Markov, wasn't it? In fact, no, it wasn't. But uh, regardless, Sakov hindering there. It was Robin Skelton, I think. Nonetheless, that was a bit of a, a dodgy rejoin, and it is it was indeed Robin Skelton who uh, got caught out there. He goes to the inside of the 131 BMW. Uh, that car is away down the order. A couple of laps off the lead, I think, at this point. Uh, all the way down in uh, 34th place is Milen Milchev. Milchev has... Uh, had his share of dramas three laps down. So he's been in the pits for some repairs somewhere along the line. Here comes Vladislav Shopov then. He's looking for a podium. Julian Janowski leaves the inside open. I think he knows that maybe this is going to be a hard fight. Janowski tries to get the power down though out of turn four, five and he does so. Interesting how you're able to take that outside line around this circuit at quite a few places. And it leaves these wonderful side-by-side -side situations. And I thought they were going to make contact there. Very close from front to rear of the two cars. Shop off to the inside for third place, though. As they approach the carousel, he's got the job done. Connor Brown would like a piece of this as well as he approaches the rear of Janowski. It looks to me as though with Rachev, Varbanov and Shopov now in the top three, Connor Brown would do very well to move up beyond fourth place. But with Shopov going wide there, anything's possible. Janowski trying to go around the outside of the kink. That's never going to work. Both Porsches off the circuit. Connor Brown goes through, says, OK, thank you very much. Janowski and Shopov still side by side. Drama, drama, drama and two damaged cars. Georgi and Atanas uh, Atanasov 
uh, just behind them as well. He could capitalize here on these two wounded cars after they found the barriers. You can see some damage on Shopov's car. Doesn't look like it's too much on Janowski's, but both uh, off the circuit, both colliding. And they won't have gotten away with that scot free, more than likely. You've got a fast Ferrari behind them who is a lap down. Georgi Atanasov, though, is most assuredly not a lap down. He's going to the inside of Julian Janowski for fifth place then. Again, how things change in a lap. Well, Janowski was third a lap ago. He's now having to try and stave off Georgi Atanasov for that fifth position. Of course, Atanasov was leading the early stages from pole position. But still in a strong place there in sixth place. Kochev, Shopov, as in Boyko Shopov. Uh, Thomas, uh, Anton Stratiev and Thomas Marks Burgess rounding out your top ten. And it's this ninth and tenth place battle that we look at the moment. Impulse Racing's Thomas Marks Burgess. Impulse with three cars in the top ten. JRS Vertical Grip also have two cars in the top ten. Burgess maybe carrying a little bit of red mist. A what could have been situation. He's on the outside at six. And he's not given much room at all there by uh, Anton Stratiev. And they collide. And for the second time in this race, Marx Burgess finds the wall. Turn seven. He was not really given much room by Anton Stratiev there coming out of six. I don't know that um, Stratiev can really validly point the blame at Thomas Marx Burgess, whose car looks like he's now crabbing quite heavily. Both cars will have been severely damaged there. Marks Burgess, the claim to the outside coming through six, wasn't given any room and skidding across the grass into seven. Both cars end up in the wall. Sure, that will be looked at once this race is concluded. Markov then goes past both of them. He's now into 13th place. There's your AM class leader just behind Krastin Stanchev who gets past for P14. Velikov up in 11th place, but Vasil Jekov, I think, has just gotten back past him. The Velikov again still just sitting there on the outskirts of the top 10. He'd so love to be there by the end. Janowski still just ahead of Atanasov then in 5th and 6th places. Doesn't seem like Shopov or Janowski are too affected in terms of performance by their earlier collision. Stratiev and Burgess both in the pit lane to repair their damage as the Ferrari ends up pointing the wrong way in the back of shot. This Road America circuit has thrown up instant accidents so far then. We're into the final seven minutes of the race now. And it's Georgi Rachev who leads the way by five seconds from his JRS vertical grip Lamborghini teammate, Viktor Varbanov. There is a replay of the number 40 Ferrari, Martin Sampson. He was showing some good pace there. Was uh, keeping pace with the top five battles before that spin. He sits in 30th position. But it's Rachev from Varbanov at the front, third place, inheriting it after the Porsches imploded. Connor Brown in the first of the Ferraris, Shopov. Janowski, Atanasov, Oiko, Rostislav Kochev, Pavel Ivanov and Vasil Jekov, your top ten at the moment. Here is uh, Rostislav Kochev. We ride on board with him as they come out of the kink. He's dropped six places from where he started, of course. Another beneficiary of that reverse grid. And again, a solid top ten finish would go some way to helping out Kochev. Kochev, who... Uh, I think had an unremarkable first appearance of the season. Rostislav powers out of the corner then, putting a lap on one of the Mercs. Atanasov, there in sixth place in the 63, still a waiting opportunity to maybe get past Julian Janowski. I'm sure Janowski's car is not a one. You can see the damage on the rear of that car, the front of uh, Vladislav Shopov as well from their previous incident.
Denisov who started on pole position. If he can get a top five finish, I think that would be a good job well done overall. Is Rachev though controlling things at the front in the AM class? It's still Krastin Stanchev uh, a fair way up the road from Mavrodiev in second in class. And your podium rounded out in AM by Lazar Katzarski, as we saw there. Vasil Zhekov under a lot of pressure from Mihal Velikov. Further back in the pack, Roy Vavek still trying to move his way towards the top 20. Going defensive there uh, is the 23rd place cut of uh, Parvanov. Oh, Vavek there into the wall going into Canada. Fired off under braking. Rejoins just ahead of our race leader, Georgi Rachev, who's picking his way through the traffic expertly. Again, Jekov and Velikov seem to be having a very exciting battle for 10th place. We saw that a while ago. Two contrasting cars, of course. 5.2 litre V10 mid engined Audi R8 versus the big 6.2 litre V8 Mercedes AMG GT3. Of course, the road going AMG with a 4 litre turbo unit, but they still use the 6.2 litre NA naturally aspirated motor in the GT3. A very, very exciting car. One to witness trackside. If you ever get the opportunity, one to have a go at in the sim if you haven't done so already. Vasil Jekov holding off Mihal Velikov for the time being, at least. Through turn one they go. Three minutes left on the clock as well, so time is certainly running out. I believe this will be the penultimate lap of the race. We'll see when Rachev crosses the line, but I think that will be the case. Here comes the Mercedes. Velikov again looking strong in a straight line. He's got the inside line for turn five. Will he move into the top ten? The answer is yes. Jekov just too deep into the corner. There you see as well Koenig. Uh, still out there on the circuit. He's in 37th place and some five laps off the lead after his damage incidents and accidents through this race. So Koenig down in 37th is uh, more than likely going to lose his championship lead here, of course. The lead that he held coming into this weekend. The German sim racing entrant, the driver we heard from massive amount of preparation that he puts into his sim racing a very very strong driver but this race has not fallen in his direction at all his uh, eye rating is going to fall below 8,000 after this uh, after this race by the looks of it if only uh, I had such problems <laughs> it's a very high place to start with your eye rating but uh, He's going to lose some over this race. Georgi Rachev. 4.9 seconds clear of uh, Varbanov in second place. Vasil Jekov. Yeah. Koenig behind him. Of course, Koenig not fighting for position, but uh, clearly on pace with his repaired car. White flag waving there, you saw on the uh, on the gantry, because this will be the final lap of the race for everybody. Rachev then on his way home. Jekov still trying to find his way back into the top ten after being overtaken by Velikov, but Velikov in the Merc should have the straight line yeah. speed in his favour now. We look back to Vivek in the Porsche with the race leader just coming up behind him. Oh. Rachev being pushed off the circuit. No, sorry, that's Varbanov. But nonetheless, Varbanov in second place, pushed into the gravel on the final lap. Luckily for him, Connor Brown is too far back to capitalize, but that will have been less than popular. Georgie Rachev, though. In the race lead as Jekov gets back into 10th place. So the Audi has found a way back through. 
Can Velikov respond? He'd love to get that top 10. Georgi Rachev is going to get a full haul of points from this race. And with it, he's going to put himself in a very good position in the championship as well. Coming into this weekend, he was third in the points. Rob, sorry, he was sixth in the points. He's now going to be up there right at the sharp end after misfortunes for others. Georgi Rachev has succeeded and he wins in the feature race here at Road America, the Sim Gear GT3 Premier League and the Season 7 champ is back up at the sharp end in Season 8 once more. Velikov then still trying to find his way through and the final corner. You can see him trying to get a good run through the corner. He's not getting a better run though than Jekov. He may well try and drag past. It is going to be a drag race, but I don't think he's going to be close enough. It's very, very, very close as they come towards the line. Oh, that was a dead heat. And who did it go to? It just about by eight thousandths of a second went to Vasil Jekov. Jekov, who came into this weekend fourth in the championship. I think he'll still be there in the top five may even be in the top three after this weekend. He's had consistent finishes, if not spectacular ones. Joris Ooms there further back in the field already across the line to win in Am is Stanchev as we once again see one of the Audis uh, seemingly starved of fuel and getting a push uh, at Canada Corner. Joris Ooms will round out the top 20 in this race. We get a replay once again of Radian Ivanov struggling in almost exactly the same way that he did previously. Is this some sort of weird tradition or is he underfilling the car? I don't know. Nonetheless, a win in Am then for Stanchev. It will be richly celebrated as well, I'm sure. As uh, it is again Ivelo Dimitrov, his uh, reserve racing teammates, that is charged with uh, trying to push the Audi across the line. Um, this is this is bizarre. I can't say I've seen this before. Are they just going to wait? Are they just going to park? What's going on? Dimitrov. Is he thinking of abandoning his teammates? Radian Ivanov um, might get a push from the Ferrari or he might not. Let's see. Here we go. Is it going to be a push? Yeah, maybe. What's going on? This is most bizarre. Answers on a postcard. <laughs> That's exactly what was going on there. But the checkered flag has been waved on this race and all right, racing marshals waving with gusto as ever as Georgi Rachev celebrates a race victory and a 1-2, of course, for JRS Vertical Grip. That's about as good as it gets. There is, I think, is that the leading car? Yes, it is. And uh, Rachev celebrating with a flourish. Aren't uh, red line of 5.2 V10 for too long? real world you'll end up with a bill sooner rather than later but thankfully Georgie Rachev uh, doesn't have to worry about that and again the continued uh, walking wounded situation for uh, reserve motorsports and reserve racing Dimitrov is limping back as well and Radian Ivanov seems to have been abandoned so again your guess is as good as mine as to what's exactly going on there but uh, Dimitrov will eventually finish 29th. Ivanov should be classified 34th in a, a very, very dramatic 40-minute encounter then here at Road America. And again, the salvage job continues. <laughs> Has he got the handbrake on? <laughs> Radlin Ivanov um, with plentiful people wanting to help him across the line but doesn't seem the Audi wants to cross the line maybe he's got some suspension damage or something you can see the Porsche smoking its tires trying to push the Audi Evo Serafimov and uh, Alexander Nikolov I believe this is uh, 
finally getting the Audi rolling. The 37 car will get to take the flag then, very, very much later than anyone else. Or maybe they'll push him straight into the pits. That might be better for everyone's sake. Well, certainly an obscure way to end the race, no? Evo Zarafimov powering the Audi home. And they're going to have him cross the line by the looks of it. They're not going to uh, direct him straight to pit road. And there you go. Our last finisher finally across the line then. Radlen Ivanov. 34th place ultimately for him on his first appearance of the season and he has now been registered as a finisher so then our results of that race in the Bullers Sim Gear GT3 Premier League Georgi Rachev taking the race win from Viktor Varbanov making it a 1-2 for JRS Vertical Grip. Connor Brown taking third. Vladislav Shopov in fourth position. Julian Janowski fifth. Georgi Tanisov from pole position ultimately finishing in sixth place. Boyko Shopov in seventh. Rostislav Kochev in eighth place. Pavel Ivanov in ninth. And Vasil Jekov just about winning a drag race home for tenth place ahead of Mihal Velikov. Daniel Markov in 12th place ahead of your AM class winner, Krastin Stanchev in 13th. Jordanin Svetanov in 14th place. Mavrodiev in 15th place. Katzarski in P16. Konstantin Kurchev in 17th place. Alexander Nikolov in 18th position, uh, as well as helping another car across the line. Ivo Serafimov in 19th. Joris Ums in 20th place. 21st to Asen Dramaliev. Uh, Radi Vodinicharov in 22nd place. He was leading AM coming into this weekend. I'm not quite sure where he'll be relative to the others after this race. Bozidar Paravanov, uh, Parvanov sorry, in 23rd place. Vivek in 24th. Halauzov in 25th place. Roban Skelton in 26th. Stefanov, Samson, Dimitrov and Rachinov rounding out the top 30. Thomas Marks Burgess after a couple of incidents at turn 7 finishes 31st. Stratiev, Milchev, Ivanov, Sakov, Kellyman, Philip Koenig, the championship leader coming into this one. He is going to be falling through the order. He finished 37th, Dimitrov 38th, Andrei 39th, Dimitrov in 40th, Nikolov and Yankov rounding out the 42 cars that took part in this race. And certainly it has been a turbulent time here in the Simgear GT3 Premier League. The championship standings are going to look a lot different after that race. That much is for certain. I believe that in the next few moments we will be joined by some of our front runners from the races we have just seen. And, uh, it was a very, very dramatic motor race, wasn't it? We will, I think, first have a look. We'll have a chat to some of our uh, AM competitors uh, we will start off, I suppose, with the man who was second in AM, since our third place finisher, Katsarski, isn't quite here yet. We will have a chat uh, with Vladimir uh, Mavrodiev, who uh, made it a BMW off-track racing 1-2 in AM in that 40-minute uh, feature race. Um, firstly, Vladimir, uh, you were there yeah, in a... It's you were there and amongst it at the start of the race as we get a replay of it on the stream at the moment. The craziness into turn one. I mean, tell me what you saw there. It looked absolutely insane. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, <laughs> kind of insane. I did, uh, I guess I, I, I got lucky there and uh, managed to avoid most of the, the drama. There were cars like everywhere, I, I think. It's, it's hard to remember now, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I got lucky there. You certainly did. And uh, how was the BMW feeling for you in general? Uh, did the car feel good for you today? Yeah, actually, pretty stable. It handled good. I'm um, I'm happy with the car. And with with the positions now, one two, it's it's great. 
Absolutely. It doesn't get any better than a 1-2. You guys are aping Red Bull Racing a little bit if you uh, watched the F1 earlier on in the day. Uh, Lazar Katzarski was third in class. We will move on uh, to chat to him for the time being. Uh, Lazar for Super Sports team um, in the Ferrari. Uh, you made up 11 places in that uh, in that feature race. And um, safe to say it was quite a, a dramatic one, wasn't it? There was no shortage of accidents happening around you. And I guess the trick was to try and be in as few accidents as possible yourself. Yeah, I would say so. The second race was all right. I tried to avoid all the accidents and I was lucky enough to manage that. And yeah. And seeing someone like uh, Connor Brown on the overall podium in the Ferrari, does that give you... Uh, some hope, some motivation that you can find more and more speed out of your car? Definitely it does, because most of the people are driving the Porsche, so I'm happy to see that the guy winning a Ferrari. So, Yeah, it's good stuff. And uh, obviously, we, we, we've got through Portimao and Road America. Um, what circuits do you expect yourself and the car to be strong at for the rest of the season? I'm not really sure. I hope on all of them. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the ideal scenario. Me well, congrats, congratulations on your podium in AM. Uh, we will now go to our winner, uh, not speaking to this man for the first time, Krastin Stanchev, uh, the number 43. Uh, again, you were in amongst the thick of it in quite a few of the accidents there in the midfield, but you managed to survive all of them. And uh, the off-track racing BMW looked very good there. You managed to keep it clean, keep it steady. And um, you did have a bit of contact, but it, it did look as though whenever there was contact, you uh, A, weren't the guilty party, and B, you managed to avoid getting into a spin. So you did quite well, I suppose. Hi, Adam. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, it was it was a great race. Uh, a lot of drama with, uh, with the fuel. Um and uh, turn one was uh, was a carnage uh, i was very sad to drive by uh, one of my teammates uh, who was uh, in the thick of it but yeah happy with the one two uh, let's hope uh, we get a one two three next time at monza and uh, keep seeing each other on sunday now often at some of the more straight line speed centric circuits um in sro competition in in the real world the BMW is good in a straight line. Uh, is that the case here? Can we expect you to be strong at Monza? Uh, I really hope so, yeah. Um, sometimes uh, the Porsche here uh, after the straights, I was uh, really closing up on them and even even on the brakes as well. Uh, but, uh, but we'll see. Uh, as I said, let's hope for a one, two, three for off-track racing. Having a big grid is always a good thing, always an exciting thing. But um, if it's 42 cars again going into that first chicane, it's going to have to be everyone relying on everyone being sensible, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. as I said, let's, let's hope we don't get uh, another turn one like, uh, like the one we had uh, just now. No, let's hope not. But let's hope that your form continues. It's been great to see you doing such a good job so far, Krastin, and uh, great job in this race. Congratulations to yourself, to Vladimir and Off Track Racing on the 1-2. Uh, that's our AM podium then. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. I believe we will now uh, get the pro drivers in there, and I can see we're already joined uh, by Connor Brown, who took the third step of the overall podium. Connor, a lot of action for you in that race. You never seemed to be, well, when you were alone, you weren't alone for long, let's put it that way. First time we've seen a Ferrari on the podium so far this season. Uh, how did you feel about your performance? I think it was damage limitation, to be honest. Uh, pace wasn't, it wasn't there with the front runners. It wasn't there with the top Porsches, and the Lambos were so quick. The guys who were running them too up front were really, really good. Um, yeah, it was just a case of keep your nose clean, keep out of trouble, and third place in a zero X. It's a great race for me. There you go, zero X as well. We'll net you a couple of extra points. Um, I don't remember you being with us in Portimao. So this is your first showing of the season. Do we expect to see you again throughout the year? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, uh, last week. We were we were off watching the real race in Alton Park, so ah. we should see us every week now, hopefully. Excellent stuff. Alton Park, is that your local circuit? It is, 20 minutes down the road. 
Oh, you lucky, lucky man. Brilliant <laughs> stuff. Well, congratulations on the podium, my friend. And uh, yes, I look forward to seeing how you do next time out at Monza. Cheers, buddy. Uh, Victor Varbanov then, one half of a JRS Vertical Grip 1-2. I don't think he is here, so we will talk to uh, Georgie, our race winner. Uh, Georgie, uh, I think that one was uh, was exciting for you, no? You did a nice big celebration for us at the end of the race. Uh, a, a great result for you, for Victor, and for the team. Yeah, good evening, good evening. Yeah, <laughs> I did quite a some donuts and some crashes at the end, but <laughs> it was quite a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy about the result of the team because uh, most of us managed to get in top 10. Uh, so unfortunately, Markov didn't, but uh, sometimes it happens. Yeah, we didn't have the best of luck last race, so uh, it ended up really bad for the whole team. But this one, we... Uh, we did some good racing and some good points. We took some good points. So, yeah, happy for the overall result of the team and the win as well. I uh, hope it's going to be the same from now on. Yes, well, you've got the uh, the records and the virtual trophies to prove it, of course. Um, uh, it looked to me that the Lamborghini, at least towards the end of the straights, was a little bit quicker than the Porsche um, are you expecting Monza, a very straight line speed circuit, to, to be one that suits the Lambo? I really don't know uh, what's going to be the pace there, but uh, in order to manage the, the, the top speed, uh, we needed to run a really low wing, which was really difficult to drive. Uh, the Porsches were really quick as well. I didn't expect them to be so quick on the straights. Um, so... Yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be tough in Monza. I guess we we'll need to do some work on the setups so we can get the top speed there because we need to leave the the wink in the garage <laughs> and and <laughs> race that way. <laughs> interesting. Okay, they don't even sell the road cars without any wing, so that's gonna be interesting. <laughs> yeah, um, we'll, we'll sew it off. So we don't need it there. <laughs> we don't need the wing there. <laughs> Nothing like a bit of virtual DIY. Um, well, thank you, Georgie. Uh, great to see you fighting through the field uh, in that race. And as you said, if you can keep doing that through the season, then. Uh, that is going to be very, very big for the championship. Uh, congratulations to our top three then. I didn't hear from Victor, but Georgi Rachev leading a 1-2 for JRS Vertical Grip and Impulse Racing on the podium, courtesy of Connor Brown. Georgi, Connor, thank you so much for joining us in the commentary box. And, uh, well, may the preparation for Monza uh, go well for you, and we'll see where you end up next time. Thanks, Adam. Uh, pleasure to have you here. So we'll see you next time. Yeah, Thank very you. much looking forward to uh, to seeing what happens at Monza. Always an exciting place for GT3 racing. But with this many talented drivers on the grid, of course, every weekend is exciting in the Simgear GT3 Premier League. If you haven't already uh, caught up with all things bollers on social media and on the Discord, etc., etc., there are links for all of that down uh, below, of course, pitlane.tv, the home of all of the action. Make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell as well so you know when the next race goes live. We'll be back same place, same time next week uh, with Monza, round three of the season. Italy's Cathedral of Speed will be home to round three. Let's see what happens as our, as our teams fight for the prize pools, 150 euros on the line, of course, for the pros, 100 euros on the line for AM as well. Lots to fight for in the Simgear GT3 Premier League. And we'll take the fight to Italy next time as we head to Monza. Thanks for joining us.